Okay, go ahead. No, that's, that's the, uh, so yes, yeah, so so what I did was I created a uh, Python script, which what it does is it for for a particular organization it fetches all the repository URLs, and then I uh, wrote a simple Java code which would uh, which would apply git ls remote and give me all the re uh, reference map, and I took its size. And then I uh, mapped it to the uh, size of the repository. How did I get the size of the repository? I used the GitHub API available for it. So that is how I mapped both of those things. And uh, the easiest way, because the Jenkins repository, it has it has around what more than a thousand repositories. The organization. So it was. Uh, so when I started looking at it visually, I thought that would be uh, more beneficial. It would be to use some kind of a metrics. To metric to actually uh, find out if there's a genuine relation between the things we're looking at. The, the two things is uh, the the first uh, parameter is the variable is uh, the uh, number of references uh, for, of a particular repository, and the second parameter is uh, the size of the repository. So the experiment it aims to find uh, a positive correlation between them, if there is one or not. So there's this uh, metric metric called uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. Uh, it basically gives us a value between zero to one. If it's of what I've read, if it's greater than 0.5 or uh, point, yeah, 0 0.5, the relation between them can actually be said. It 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 means something significant. And uh, so so what we got with the Jenkins uh, report with the Jenkins organization, I got it. Uh, point two, and then I tried it with Netflix repository. Uh, I tried just randomly different. Uh, so with Netflix, I thought uh, they would have uh, huge repositories. It's just a, I, I thought that uh, since it's a, it's also a very widely used product, just like Jenkins. Or uh, let's just not go there. The I just thought that the repositories would be big and uh, the references would vary in a, in an interesting way. Same with Facebook, uh, they also have some great uh, open source products. So I did that. And with all of them, uh, the the PSN the correlation is coming uh, very low. So uh, I actually also looked at. I have uh, posted the link of the data as well. If you want to see the raw raw data, what what I could see was that for a 500 size repository, I saw a thousand references. For a one or two MB repository, I saw a thousand references. So that basically says that we cannot. Uh, possibly use it as a heuristic because that would lead into totally inconsistent results. So um, you can you can look at the raw data if you want to. And I also uh, so make it a to make it a little uh, easy. I actually plotted uh, the uh, number of references and the size on a graph. And uh, this is for the Jenkins repository, all of the points. So this is on a log scale to make it a little more clear, not in the linear one. So what we can see is if if there was a correlation between uh, so this is a scatter plot so if there if there was a if there was a significant correlation between them so they, here at in this graph you can see two things which would which would tell you that the correlation is not significant enough the first is the shape of the scatter plot if it was uh, linear in any sense it would uh, the the plot would the line you're seeing here the linear line it would it would be around that it would uh, what uh, and i actually am not able to find a word for it it would populate the, the points would populate around the line it would give us a shape where we could say okay there is a linear relationship between these two uh, variables the second thing is something which is automatically calculated uh, uh, r square is the coefficient of determination it's kind of this it's kind of similar to the pearson coefficient of correlation and uh, what it basically means is, uh, if R square is uh, greater than, it, it's also it also uh, uh, it's uh, marked it's measured from zero to one. And uh, for our case, the value was zero point zero five, which seems uh, a lot less than what we would want. So, so from the observations, from all of these observations, I could I could say that we should not use it. I I don't. Uh, think it, it would give us any kind of uh, benefit in uh, predicting the size of the repository. Yeah. Did we 
did we i guess uh, one of the questions i had was like uh were we actually measuring whether number of refs influenced the speed of the fetching and stuff like that too um because i think here you're trying to say like oh number of refs would give us some kind of deterministic measure of how big the repo is but did we actually see if uh if number of refs impacted performance in a similar manner? Uh, so just in this, this what you're saying is uh, what comes under the benchmarking experiments we do to actually analyze if the performance is affected by the uh, structure of the repository, uh, the parameters we have for the repositories, like uh, the number of refs or the, uh, or the size, uh, the, the size of the objects. This, this experiment was solely, uh, it was constructed just to find out if the heuristics we want to use uh, to find a way to actually estimate the size is is our heuristic sum is is it actually is it going to approximate the size so we were not actually sure because uh, previous experiments with the benchmarks i also uh, saw that the number of references were not positively correlating with the size i could not find uh, that but i did that with just four repositories so i was not sure personally so i thought uh, let's take a, a large number, uh, say a thousand repositories, and then maybe hundred, two hundred, and let's see what what uh, the data shows us. So, so this oh. this experiment just aims to do that. What you're saying comes under the benchmarking, and I, I plan to do that. Uh, Omkar has uh, is, uh, actually initiated a great step towards it. We discussed that in the Git, on the Gitter channel, and we'll uh, pursue that to find out if the number of refs actually um, they have some significant. Uh, effect on the performance of Git fetch. My apologies. I uh, just realized that that that's, was that's totally something in our in our next phase also. <laughs> so, but this is fantastic. Uh, this is really good data, regardless of. Uh, I should have started with that. But this is really good data. Okay. So. Um, yeah. So that that graph that you just presented is brilliant at showing. The, the question I had, hey, could I see the raw data? You just showed the raw data with that graph. You're, you're, it's, it, it, to me, it looks very clear. No way should we trust the, the output of LS Remote as, a, as any kind of an approximation of the actual size of the repository. There's just not enough relationship between the two to trust that data. So, so better to say no heuristic using LS Remote than to use, use it and have it be wrong so frequently. Good, yeah, excellent, yeah. well done, yeah. very good. Thank you. So um, after that, so the question I had after finding this, I, I found this on Sunday, I think. And then I had the question that, so what should we, so the, the, the estimator we have now, uh, it has only two uh, possible heuristics right now we have. And the first one is that we look for uh, cache uh, local repository, uh, Git directory. If we had have that, then it's the, it's the best thing. We can have then the second we were thinking was to to expose an ex extension for uh, the plugins which provide git services uh, scm services so uh, so with with those two heuristics my concern is that both of them for both of them we it, it's like a conditional thing it's it's not necessary that we will be able to tell the size of the repository because if some if git if the um, if the GitHub uh, plugin, which is depending on the Git plugin, has not implemented our extension, we will not be able to uh, use that uh, the GitHub APIs to determine the size. It's a sure shot way to know the size that we know. But if we're exposing it as an, uh, I, I assume that if we expose it, it as an extension, it depends on the plugins which are implementing that extension only then we can use that heuristic. So that makes us prone to this, uh, to the fact that whatever heuristics we have, they, uh, they are conditional in the sense that they might work or we, we might tell the size, we will be accurate about it, but we, there is an equal uh, probability that we will not be able to use the estimator uh, API altogether. So that is something I'm a little, um, as a little actually upset that uh, we should, why does Git not provide anything which, uh, which would not depend on any uh, service provider or the local cache. So I actually started to look into uh, the Git internals 
that is the plumbing commands get provides and it was actually a very uh, confusing and long road it seems like a long road and i i started to look into it i i was looking into how git fetch is implemented and then i uh, so then i had this idea that i should look into the j git source code because they've all, they've implemented it in java and i i know a little bit of java so that's the best way to uh, actually look into it so i started looking into the classes and then i actually found a class called uh, pack configuration which uh, so 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 i thought that we could have a heuristic which would estimate the size which would actually uh, estimate the size of the pack object the compressed object and if we know that we have a lower boundary uh, on the size of the repository which is is something if we don't have any kind of size but uh, so the pack config is basically a configuration which uh, when jgit is trying to uh, pack the object so what i'm not able to figure out is so what i saw actually to my own dis, uh, to my own uh, self is that uh, to pack an object or to use that pack config class jgit is basically downloading those packed object first and it assumes that it exists in a local repository so so that kind of uh, disappointed me and i and i it's leading to uh, i think an observation that it might not be possible for us to look at a remote git server and then just look at the pack object and get its size as as far as i can understand how git is written it's it's meant for us to download the pack object first and then do anything we want to with it it's not possible for us to look at it and then decide if we want to download it or not look at the size uh, i i was thinking that maybe uh, uh so i was also looking at the transfer protocols get provides but i was not uh, able to figure out any way i looked at stack overflow i looked at a lot of internet resources but people have not found any consolidated way to do this so uh, i am actually confused there is is it even possible it the heuristic in itself sounds interesting but uh, i'm not sure if it's possible Uh, Rishabh, I think what I think is like uh, like trying to get the details of the dot pack object is somewhat similar to the square one approach that we were trying to get the count object git count object uh, come on it is somewhat similar like uh, if that's possible to get uh, get the remote details with that command then it will be possible just check check the uh, similarity between that I think there would be some similarity. git count objects in uh, there was the initial actually, yep for git count objects i forgot did we actually uh, look at uh, did we point it to a remote uh, repository or a local repository were we counting i think we 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 count we were counting the local repository i think so then it would not we actually need something which would yep. point at the remote repository and give us yep uh, so uh, Yes. Yeah. So, 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 I, so the I issue. I think there is there yeah. is some similarity between these two, like in pack objects that this count gives and the dot pack you are looking at. Into. Yep. But Umkar, my question is that uh, even if we look at how git count object is working, git count object object assumes that we have the local uh, we have the right. repository in uh, on our local yep. system. But what we want is we don't want to clone the repository. We want to look mm. at the remote server and get the size. so i i'm not sure if this would give us the answer uh, yes, to, this is um, this is not giving us the answer but what i am trying to say is if you can uh, if this provides some functionality to look into the remote that would be somewhat similar to what you are looking for dot dot pack object yep yeah. yeah i was i was taking omkar's comments to mean that git count objects is another evidence that what we're what we were thinking we could do is probably not feasible right there isn't a way mm-hmm. to ask the remote repository give me your size except through an api call like github so yeah. so git git itself had no interest in and i could understand linus doesn't doesn't actually he didn't want to create a source controls or he didn't want to create a uh, a competitor to source control management systems he wanted to solve his problem so so he he didn't put things into the protocol he didn't need 
Yeah, so, so I think that's what happened with the exploration or another heuristic. So, um, so is it okay I mean, for us to, one. yeah, it's just, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, Justin, please. I, I don't have anything great to say. No, yes, you do, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, what I was going to say is I wonder if it, that would maybe be uh, a reason to explore maybe the, the first time that we pull a Git repo is, you know, going to be whatever it is. But then after that, uh, we would have a determination of the size of, of that repo. And we would be, potentially be able to track that over time um, if it's grown or, or decreased. Is that, that happens too. Uh, that's a optimization on top of that, but uh, I wonder if that would be a a way to go about it, or if, if you've thought about anything like that. Uh, so what I was assuming uh, with, with this thing was that the cache would be a place where if if we've uh, cloned the repository for the first time, I I haven't looked into code that much that I'm 100% sure, but I assume that the cache would have the repository there. Uh, the local repository would be cached. So then I would have a place where I can uh, know that, okay, this is the size of the repository. And for the subsequent builds, or uh, if you're using the plugin for anything after that, we could then optimize the operations. Uh, did I understand you correct, Justin? Yeah, um, I think it could either be done with a cache or, or sorry, there's a, cause I think you were talking about a, um, I think Oleg was saying there was maybe a Git cache that gets, uh, that hangs around a little bit on the master, right? Or the main the instance. Um, yeah, so I mean, something like that could potentially be a way of doing it or potentially like even working off of what one of the agents get repos and determining the size after you pull. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to measure how much impact that is on performance too, I suppose, but uh, yeah, something, something like one of those kinds of approaches is kind of okay. Okay, I, I can look into it. So what you're saying is that I, I uh, on the Jenkins agent, I uh, pull the repository. I clone the repository just to check its size. You're not saying that. No, I'm just saying like you would use, so if I'm a, as a user, I clone a repository uh, and that a lot of times I've believe most of that work happens on the agent um, if you have more than just the master the main um, yeah and so you would be able to just use whichever whatever disk is has your git repository you would use that after you've done your clone potentially the idea if the cache is like if that cache is reliable then maybe that's the right way to go uh, i'm just thinking of like weird scenarios uh, and I know very little about the cache, so <laughs> perhaps marker. Yeah, the, so the, the that that cache on the master is is used by multi-branch, and so users that use multi-branch will tend to have those caches already populated, and and so I think I think it's a good excuse to encourage people. Hey, if you're if you're doing this work, we think multi-branch is the way to go anyway. Use multi-branch, and you'll get the benefit of this heuristic already. So the my hunch is that most of the time the heuristic will be satisfied because the cache is found. Some some users may come to us and say, "Oh no, I'm only using freestyle project." Sorry, you won't get the benefit until you've cloned it at least once. Then, and for me, the fallback is still the fallback is use command line git, and command line git is the best performing in large repositories anyway, right? Therefore, the places where we could gain benefit by switching to JGit look like they are smaller repositories where we might get faster, yes. but the, the total savings is incrementally much, much less by the switch from command line Git to JGit on small repos, right? There's, they didn't take long to clone originally. Yes, exactly. Uh, so Mark, I was uh, just wanted to, uh, Ask, is, is this the cache you're talking about, locking the cache uh, in the multi-brand project? That's the one. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm not even sure you need to acquire a lock because I think all you want to do is read 
directory contents. And if it's inconsistent or imperfect, you just don't care. You're just trying to get a quick approximation. So I don't even think you need to acquire the lock. You just get the lock, get, do the get cache entry that's telling you a directory. And now you can, you can go out and do file system level access to that directory and, and count up its, its contents and the size of its contents. Okay. Okay, I'm looking into it. So, uh, so the last thing I uh, I already discussed it uh, before the meeting started actually officially. So this was just this is just how uh, I'm um, I'm actually uh, creating or designing the new uh, not designing creating uh, rather cloning the Git SEM telescope for our needs. Uh, the size estimator class. So uh, I was uh, so before creating the class, I started uh, to look at the SEM API and um, uh, where at what level I am going to uh, use the API we are creating and how uh, am I going to uh, what all should I provide with the API? Is it just a boolean where I say or a boolean or something like a decision that you use JK or Git or is it something more than that? I was uh, I was looking at those things, and uh, it's mostly exploration right now. I haven't created a prototype even, but I, I was thinking that first understand uh, the level above uh, the Git SCM. That is where the builders work uh, to understand it first well, and then uh, use the class because that's where the class is going to be used. So uh, might as well understand the uh, overall process first as much as I can, and. Uh, Write the prototype. So, so with this, um, so this is what I've done with that uh, uh, the Git size estimator class. Yes. So uh, yeah, this is this is it right now. So the takeaway I have is that uh, we have uh, two heuristics right now, and we would want to work with those. We're not looking at. I should not look for something else because I, I invested a lot of time in, into looking into the gate internals and JGate. And uh, so I, I should probably, should I uh, explore it more or should I uh, work with the heuristics we have? Okay. Heuristics for me anyway, unless the other mentors have a different opinion for me, the heuristics that those two are already going to solve many, many cases and no heuristic, the fallback is still okay. Right, our fallback, our fallback decision use command line git is not a bad decision. It's not a bad decision. Yes, even if yeah, that's true. If if the heuristic, okay. it, it's disastrous if the heuristic is wrong and the heuristic tells us that the two gigabyte Linux kernel should be downloaded by JGit. That's a disaster, right? That, that's but, a, but that's an unlikely yeah. uh, unlikely outcome given the given the the correlation, the negative correlation or the non correlation you found between. Our, our estimators and and repository size. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess this is it. I love. So, so I'll I'll be updating the track. Yeah. Yes, Mark. I I had a, a minor business item. I'm going to be out next week. My son in his mid twenties is getting married, and so oh, I will be I will be unavailable a week from Friday, because we'll be in the middle of all sorts of things in a neighboring state. Uh, and uh, I probably will be un unavailable a week from today. So I'm, I'm not, I, we may need to have someone else host the Zoom session. Um, Rishab, if you want to create that, you can do a, a private or you could create your own Zoom account. They'll do free, free sessions up to 40 minutes. So that yes. would limit the session, but you could do it that way, then, then host it. I apologize, I can't, but my son's that's, getting that's married okay. and I'm delighted. <laughs> that's a great thing. Congratulations, Mark, for that. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's a grown up now. I, I and it's, it's wonderful. We're, we're delighted with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing. I, I'll host the meetings with my uh, personal Zoom account. That's okay. Great. Thank you. You, okay. Okay. You will be unavailable uh, from starting this Friday. I, I will Friday. be here. I will be here this Friday. I will attend our okay. session this Friday. Next Wednesday, I will not attend. I will probably not attend next Wednesday. I will definitely not attend next Friday. 
but I will be here this okay. Friday. Okay. Thanks, Mark. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs>